If you're a future actuary that has experienced setbacks or failures early on in your actuarial journey, and now you feel like you've gotten off to a bad start, or maybe you wish you had started taking your actuarial career a bit more seriously one to two years ago so that you'd be in a better place now. If so, well then this video is for you because I'm going to be showing you the fastest and most efficient way to become a top candidate and get your very first actuarial dream job. Now this is a five phase method and by the end you're going to become a top candidate and you're going to be eligible for almost any entry-level actuarial job. And by the way, this method does not require you to have an internship, it doesn't require you to have high grades, and it will also work if you're starting in your 20s, your 30s, or even your 40s. But the one thing it does require is that you have or are in the process of getting a bachelor's degree. Now by the end of this video, you're going to know the exact method that I used to get my first actuarial job and also the method that I have been using and have used in the past to help hundreds and hundreds of future actuaries progress towards getting their first actuarial job. So stay tuned. I'm Bria, associate of the Society of Actuaries and founder of the Actuary Accelerator community, where we train future actuaries how to become top candidates and get their actuarial dream job. Okay, now to start off, it's important to know that you have got to follow these phases in order. If you're jumping back and forth between the different phases, it's going to take you longer than it really needs to in order to get your first actuarial job. Okay, now the good news is if you are watching this video, you've probably already completed the beginner phase of the top candidate method. In the beginner phase, that's where you're really learning about the actuarial career. You're understanding all the different steps it takes to become a fully qualified actuary. You're learning what you do in an actuarial career, all that kind of stuff. This is a chance when you're really getting your questions answered about the career and you're overcoming that mindset mastery that I talked about in last week's video, which I will link right up here if you didn't see it. This is also the phase where you create a plan for yourself. You figure out exactly how you're going to achieve this goal of becoming an actuary. Now, next up comes the rising candidate phase. Now, this phase is where you're really setting a foundation for not only your actuarial career, but also tons and tons of other careers out there in case later on you decide you don't want to be an actuary. You're going to have an amazing skill set as someone that has become a top actuarial candidate and also eventually worked in an entry level actuarial job. And if you decide in the future you don't want to be an actuary anymore, that's okay because the skill set, the knowledge, and experience that you have have gained is going to be able to be used in so many other areas and careers. So it's in this rising candidate phase where you really start to set that foundation. You learn things like technical skills, Excel, programming, and by the way, tonight I am doing an Excel training just for future actuaries. So if you are interested in knowing more about that and signing up for it, make sure you go check it out down below in the description of this video. I'll put all the details there. It's going to be super fun. I'm training live. Okay, and now moving on in this phase you're also learning some communication skills and it's when future actuaries really start to get their related experience. I as you probably know recommend that you get a stepping stone position to give you related experience that actuarial employers are going to value and it's in this rising candidate phase that I recommend you do that. So like I said this phase is really foundational you're gaining a lot of the qualifications that are going to help you become a top candidate in the future and get that actuarial job but you're also really laying a great foundation for any career that you want to get into in the future. I want you to take note here that I have not talked about actuarial exams yet and the reason for that is because if you lay this foundation for yourself early on it's going to help you get through your actuarial journey and get that actuarial dream job quicker. You see if you gain technical skills and you have great communication skills then you're probably going to be able to get a stepping stone position fairly easily. That stepping stone position is going to give you related experience but the thing is getting that related experience can take six to 12 months, right? You wanna be working in a stepping stone position for several months in order to gain the experience that actuarial employers are really going to value. So if you do this first and then later pass an actuarial exam, you're going to be able to pass exams while at the same time working in your stepping stone position and gaining relevant experience and soft skills, great communication skills, everything like that, that you'll want for an actuarial job. Okay, so now moving on to the next phase of the top 
candidate method is the intermediate candidate phase. So in this phase, like we talked about, you're going to take your first actuarial exam. Really in this phase, you're starting to specialize in the actuarial career. You're taking your first exam, which is very actuarial specific. You're learning actuarial terms and concepts. And all this is really important to achieve only after you've set the foundation that we talked about earlier in the rising and the beginner candidate phase. Oftentimes this phase takes the longest because studying for an exam does take quite a while. But the good thing is that while you are going through this phase, you're also working in a stepping stone position and gaining that relevant experience. Okay, now let's move on to the fourth phase of the top candidate method. This is the top candidate phase. And it's in this phase where you're really adding on some extras. You, this is kind of like the icing on the cake for employers, because in this phase, you're going above and beyond what a lot of actuarial employers will really expect from you. Okay, so first off in this phase, you're probably going to be passing another exam, maybe two exams. You're also going to be practicing your presentation skills. As someone going into the actuarial field, you'll really want to be comfortable presenting to different audiences. So this is a great time to practice. And in this phase, you're also going to work on really amplifying your experience that you're getting from your stepping stone position. Sometimes there's little things that you can do in your stepping stone position that are really going to be beneficial when it comes to looking for an actuarial job. And it's during this phase that you really want to focus on those areas in your stepping stone position that are really going to give you great experience to add to your resume that you might not already have up to this point. Okay, so once you have completed the top candidate phase, that means you are officially a top candidate. And that's essentially where the term top candidate method comes in. Now, I fully believe that if you become a top candidate, that it's inevitable that you will be able to get an actuarial job because you essentially have all the skills and qualifications that most actuarial employers are looking for. Really, it's just a matter of time and you applying to several different companies and eventually you will be able to get that job. Is this making sense so far? If it is, please give this video a thumbs up to let me know. Okay, so probably about seven months or so, maybe eight months ago, I did a study of 100 entry level actuarial jobs. And while I was doing that study, I really found that there were five main things that most actuarial employers were looking for. About 95% of them were looking for someone with a bachelor's degree. About 85% of them were looking for someone with technical skills. About 75% of them were looking for someone with great communication skills. 74% were looking for someone that had passed at least one actuarial exam. And 56% of those employers were looking for someone with related experience. Now, if you follow the top candidate method, then you're going to gain all of these skills and qualifications in the most efficient and the fastest way possible. And the reason for that is that you're overlapping the time that you spend gaining these qualifications each individually. So for example, while you're studying for an exam, you're also in a stepping stone position, gaining relevant experience and probably great communication skills as well. So there's a lot of overlap there. And that is what makes the top candidate method the most efficient way to gain these qualifications that employers are really looking for. Now, most unguided future actuaries start their actuarial journey by taking an exam. And that is so inefficient because one, they're probably going to have to go back to the rising candidate phase and learn those technical skills, get those communication skills, and then get a stepping stone position to allow them to get related experience. And then they're going to have to stay in that stepping stone position for six to 12 months or so. And that means that they're not really making the most of their time, right? They're going to take longer to get that actuarial job and the qualifications that a top candidate has. Oftentimes, they're also going to miss important steps too. Like maybe they won't spend enough time on technical skills because they're rushing through it, trying to get good enough in order to get an actuarial job. They might not really fully understand actuarial terms and concepts. All these things are really important if you want to be a top candidate and have the best chance of getting an actuarial job. But when you do these things out of order, it makes it so much more difficult to reach that top candidate level and reach it quickly. Now take note here, you do not need to have an internship in order to make this work, you can be starting your actuarial journey late. No matter what, you are still going to be able to achieve success if you follow this top candidate method. So what do you think? Do you think this method makes more sense than following the traditional approach of starting your actuarial journey by taking an exam? Or do you still think that that's the best approach? Either way, I'd love to know what you think. Let me know down below in the comments. I will be reading and responding to every single comment there. So make sure you let me know. And that's all for today. I will see you next week. Bye for now.